may invite you, if you would, <clears throat> turn with me over to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. I looked back and Brian was grinning at me, which means you forgot to put the microphone on. All right, I've got it on now. Hebrews chapter 12. Now, I was originally going to look at this passage of Scripture tonight, but I want to take a moment or two and look at it this morning. So I will give you the same homework assignment this morning that I was going to give you, which is go back and look at Hebrews chapter 11 and read Hebrews chapter 11. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 is referred to by many people as the roll call of faith. The Bible starts out in Hebrews chapter 11 and says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, Abraham, when he was called of God, went out to a country that he, he didn't know where he was going, but God was leading him. And you can go on through each and every example in Hebrews chapter 11, and you see example after example after example of people who were willing to, to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in faith. Not knowing all the answers. Not knowing what another day might bring forth. But knowing as we sing, I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. So they were willing to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And in most instances we see in chapter 11, they were faithful, they were rewarded for their faith, and God used them in great and mighty ways. In other instances, they stood firm for the Lord Jesus Christ, and they found heartache and hardship. They found prison, perhaps. They found other terrible things, and they were killed because of the Lord, but they died in faith believing that God said that there was coming a better day and a better place and because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that day they would see. And it didn't matter what happened in this life. It didn't matter whether they faced imprisonment, whether they faced persecution. You know, I was thinking about Alexis and she's going to go up into New York and boy, she's going to have culture shock. Number one, they don't speak Southern up there. It's going to be like talking in foreign languages. But also, there are a lot of folks up there who will persecute her to an extent because of her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I said we need to be praying for her to envelop her in prayer that God would use her and open a door mightily for her as she goes out and shares the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to children, to teenagers, to adults, to all the different things she's going to be involved in. And she's going to be exposed to a hurting world. And she's going to see firsthand what I say in the last night. People need the Lord. And they do. People are so caught up in this world system. And all the things that this world is doing. That, that they get caught up and caught away from the things of God. And they don't realize what they're missing. And they need someone to come and be a light and to show the light and the love Amen. that is Jesus Christ. Amen. So pray for her. Pray for these young ladies back here. Pray for all who are trying to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. That they might be faithful and stand for the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, Wherefore, Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and it's set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's look to Jesus. The Bible says we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What witnesses? Those who have lived the life of faith before us. He pointed out to those great 
men and women of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. But my friend, there have been others. There have been others. You know, I think of that man that kept walking to, to church that Glenn saw time and time and time again. That was his testimony that he didn't matter what the weather was. He didn't matter what was going on. He would go out and face the elements. He would go out and go to the house of God. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his life for him. So he was willing to go. And you stop and look at our own lives. Each one of us who knows the Lord Jesus Christ can stop and take a moment and think about someone we know who was an inspiration to us as a child of God, a person of faith in God. They weren't there, my friends. It would be very hard for us to have ever been introduced to our Savior. You know, the Bible tells us he could call 10,000 angels. He could call the angels to heaven to stop him from being, having, having to be on that cross. But he went there freely. He could put an angel on every mountaintop right now proclaiming the word of God. We, we wouldn't listen most of us. You know, you go back and you look, God had a chosen people. We call them the Jewish people. Our Sunday school lesson this morning was about those very people. And it talked about the fact that, you know, the northern kingdoms, the ten tribes up there, and then the southern kingdom of Judah, that, that they were each rebellious against God. You know what happens a lot of times when we're suffering, when we're experiencing affliction, we draw near to God, and then when things turn around and start getting better, and, and uh, all right, East Tennessee work gooder. When they get gooder and gooder, we look around us and we start relying on the stuff. The stuff of this world. And we're all prone to accumulate stuff. How many of you got garages? Right. How many of you got garages? How many of you got garages you can put your car in? <laughs> Well, if you got a garage, you can put your car in. That means you took your stuff and stuffed it somewhere else, right? How many of you got an attic stuff full of stuff? Basement stuff full of stuff. How much of that stuff have you used in the last 30 days? <laughs> but we collect it. We like stuff. And if we're not careful, stuff will rule our lives. the Lord. And we start focusing on stuff. Might be a big boat. I thought it was a big boat up the interstate here. And I have to admit, I didn't really notice the truck that was following it because I was kind of gawking at the boat. <laughs> I thought, oh, it would be nice to drop one of these lakes floated it around a little bit. Yeah. Then I went by and I saw another little boat down the road here that was for sale. I thought, wouldn't that be nice? But you know what? God didn't call me to fall in love with boats. God didn't call me to fall in love with vehicles. He didn't call me to fall in love with, uh, I'll use another one. It's going to sound strange to you. Firearms. I know, I know some folks. I know one guy. He has right at 50, 50. 44 Magnum pistols. Now what does anybody need with 50 of them? You know? But he likes them. He loves them. He, 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 I know some other people are caught up in that. Some are caught up in knives. What are these great biggins? Pocket knives. Anybody in here collect pocket knives? You feel like I'm talking about you? Well, maybe I am. All right. Anybody in here collect guns? They will admit it. <laughs> you know, we do these things. Well, it's all right to have some of these things. As long as we keep our relationship with the Lord where it needs to be. Amen. It's when we start focusing on those things, that stuff, be it a person, a thing, an object, whatever it is, that will become our idol, and we need to stop a moment and look back and think about our salvation, think about those heroes of faith in our lives those people who led us and demonstrated the life of Christ before us that we might see and understand what it is to be a child of God 
and those preachers who proclaim the word of God before us that we might understand that we're all lost, we're all sinners in need of salvation. We need to look back at those faithful men and women of faith over the years who have influenced us, and we ought to use their example. He said, wherefore we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and run with patience the race that's set before us. You know, we need to be marathon, not sprinters. Too many people in faith sprint and then they're it's gone. We need to understand that as a child of God, we should be in this for the long haul. We are in it for the long haul. Eternity! Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eternity is at stake. And my friends, depending on what we do with the Lord Jesus Christ depends, determines where we will spend eternity. The Bible tells us that we will spend eternity in one place or another. In heaven itself, in the magnificent splendor that God has created, and in his presence throughout eternity forever and ever and ever, or in the fires of hell that were prepared for the devil and his angels. For all of those nations and all those people who turned their back on Almighty God and His gift of salvation will find themselves. Because there is a payday someday. You know, our scripture downstairs is talking about uh, some of the Israelites doing things in secret. You ever done something in secret? Done something you didn't want nobody to know about. You know, there were people down the, down the road there in Kingsport found out the other day they had a neighbor who was doing stuff in secret. They didn't make it that that me. Raising marijuana and doing all that stuff. Trying to keep it secret. But his sins were found out. And my friend, I want you to know something. I don't care how secret you try to be, how secretive you try to be. I don't care how much you try to hide your sin, how much you try to, to be upstanding with everyone and anyone around you. My friends, if your heart's not where it needs to be, if your heart's not in the right relationship with the Lord God, you will be found out. The Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment and Almighty God says that he knows every thought, every intent of your heart. If you stand before Almighty God without the blood of Jesus Christ covering your sins, my friends, you will hear the Lord say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. So where are we today? The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, I have no hope outside the blood of Jesus Christ. I have no hope for being a child of faith outside of the faith I have in Jesus Christ. I have no hope of being able to live for him outside of the power of God that's given to me through the Spirit of God that lives inside of me. My faith. Run with patience that race that's set before us. My faith. I ask you this morning, are you a child of God? Are you a child of faith? Your child of faith would be a child of obedience. A child of obedience. You'll do what God's called you to do. You'll follow God's word. You know, the children of Israel. The Bible says time and again they were stiff necked and obstinate people, but I submit to you, I don't think they were any more stiff necked, any more obstinate than we are. I still remember many years ago when my daughter was just a young thing. Oh, maybe this big. I still remember talking to her one day. She reached over and I don't even remember exactly what she was doing, but she was doing something to a lamp and I told her not to do it. She pulled her hand back and looked at me and stuck her hand right back over there. I reached over, slapped that hand, she pulled it back. She looked at me eye to eye, put that hand right back in there. <laughs> I smacked that hand a little harder. That hand came back. She looked at me and there were tears swelling in her eyes. 
and her hand was shaking, and she put that hand right back in there. <laughs> the battle of wills, I smacked it a little bit harder. She pulled it back, you know what? She never did it again. <laughs> but we're like that, aren't we? Don't tell me what to do. Y'all never do that. Husbands and wives, y'all never done that, right? Don't you be telling me what to do. I'll do what I want to do. By the way, what I want to do. What is that, the key to a faithful marriage? Yes, dear. You know, the wives are supposed to be submissive to their husbands. We've got to remind them of that every minute. Hey, you're supposed to be submissive to me. 